WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, no, no. It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. Lucas will be joining me live via satellite coming up in the second segment. And we're going to get started with the big story of the week here that has uh, surprisingly superseded all of the evolution and crown jewel and everything else. Uh, WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, well, he had this to say this past Monday on Raw. I feel like I feel like I owe everybody an apology. For months, maybe even a full year, I've come out here and spoke as Roman Reigns and I said a lot of things, you know. I said that I'd be here every single week I said I'd be a fighting champion, I said I was gonna be consistent, and I said I was gonna be a workhorse, but that's all lies. It's a lie because the reality is my real name is Joe. And I've been living with leukemia for 11 years. And unfortunately, it's back. And because the leukemia is back, I cannot fulfill my role. I can't be that fighting champion. And I'm gonna have to relinquish the Universal Championship. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll take every prayer you can send my way, but I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for you to feel bad for me. Because I have faith. When I was 22 years old, I was diagnosed with this. And very quickly, I was able to put it in remission. But I'm not gonna lie, that was the hardest time of my life. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money. I didn't have a home. And I had a baby on the way. And football was done with me. But you wanna know who gave me a chance? The team that gave me a chance was the WWE. And when I finally made it to the main roster and I was on the road, they put me in front of all of you, the WWE Universe. And to be honest, y'all have made my dreams come true. And it didn't matter if you, you cheered me, it didn't matter if you booed me. You've always reacted to me, and that is the most important thing. And for that, I have to say thank you so much. But I want to make one thing clear. By no means is this a retirement speech. Because after I'm done whooping leukemia's ass once again, I'm coming back home. And when I do, it's not gonna just be about titles and being on top, no, it's about a purpose. I am coming back because I wanna show all of you, the whole world, I wanna show my family, my friends, my children, and my wife that when life throws a curveball at me, I am the type of man that will stand in that batter's box. I will crowd the plate, I will choke up, and I will swing for the fences every single time. 
because I will beat this and I will be back so you will see me very, very soon. Swinging for the fences like Max Muncy, right? Uh, a little too soon? I mean, not really. I mean, the game just ended, what, like seven, eight and a half hours ago now? My goodness. The longest World Series game in history, Max Muncy hitting a walk-off home run for the Dodgers in the bottom of the 18th inning. Yeah, still a little sleep-deprived from that. But, uh, yeah, that being that, that humor aside from here, obviously a very serious situation of uh, Roman Reigns with, uh, with leukemia, a type of cancer, and uh, after have it, having it been in remission about a decade ago, it is back, so he is now taking a leave of absence from WWE to fight it and also taking that battle public to raise awareness for and funds for research in order to advance cures for the disease. And... You can't help but, I mean, feel for him. I mean, obviously he wouldn't want to, you know, he's on top as the champion and doesn't want to relinquish it. Although, I will say that as that had gone on, I actually, I won't say from whom, but I'd gotten a a text from an individual or a group of individuals, I should say, where there was a discussion, even remotely inquiring that this might be some sort of a joke, hoax, angle, storyline, something along those lines. And... While WWE has done some crazy things in the past, I, as as this one individual had said in the text, it has to be real. They just can't do a cancer angle, and I'm a hundred percent in agreement with that. They, they they you can't, especially given how much that they've done over the years. They've kind of backtracked a little bit this year, but a lot of the stuff with the uh, the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Yeah, I mean, pretty much WWE was all pink for a little while for the month of October. So, I mean, they, they take cancer very seriously. So I don't think, even though this is the same company that had uh, staged a limo explosion uh, with Vince McMahon, granted that was about 11 years ago, that I don't think that they would necessarily go there. So, I mean, best wishes to Roman Reigns as he uh, as he, he works on beating this thing. I mean, what, what can I say? Cancer sucks. Believe that. Oh, goodness. All right. Before we uh, before we move on to other uh, other news notes and otherwise here, let's get a quick look at the local scene here from Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Oh, good afternoon. You were saying about that cancer thing. I think that would have been poor taste. Well, that, and that's why, that angle. and and I, I almost, I hesitated to chide the individual for yeah, even yeah. suggesting yeah. that it might be an angle, because the fact that you're even thinking of it is, is I guess, a little bit, not only skeptical, but maybe a little yeah. bit uh, snarkish or, you know, or smarkish, something along those lines. And while I can understand that to a degree, I think something like this, it would be too much of a public relations nightmare if it was some sort of an angle or storyline. I mean, you saw, yeah. I mean, granted, what, 16 years ago, how just an angle or storyline of homosexuality, you know, the whole Billy and Chuck thing, how that led to this whole controversy and got the GLAAD involved. And and it, all, all of these, uh, I mean, there was that kind of controversy, and this was... While they were still on a public level, this was before dealing with the multi-hundreds of millions of dollars that they're at now with the development of the network and everything else. So that is too high of a gamble for too little of a payoff, even if the presumed presumed goal would be to get everybody in Roman Reigns' favor. I, I, I Even if there's that desperation to get everybody to cheer him, I don't think that they would ever go this route. Yeah. Uh, Chikara is this afternoon with a 3 p.m. bell time at the Russell Factory. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Chikara at the uh, the Russell Factory, not too far from the uh, the Ashburner Inn, where I know we've done yeah. a few of the Baseball Insider shows. Although, yeah, baseball almost over for the season, although it uh, felt like it was never going to end last night. <laughs> yeah. Primal Conflict Wrestling is November 2nd at the Russell Factory uh, with Joe Casey. Okay, that's this coming and, Friday. Yeah, this coming Friday, 8 p.m. bell time. Yeah, those who, uh, who I guess, maybe will get a nap in between as uh, 
Crown Jewel is set to be that morning. We'll see how uh, see how that goes along here. We'll talk more about that coming up in the second segment. I thought segment. that was a Saturday. No, that is that is Friday the second. Oh, boy. I have all my calendar wrong then. <laughs> No, it is uh, it is set yeah. to be. I'm, I'm pulling up the exact uh, date and time and everything here. It is definitely Friday, November second, and we'll delve more into this on the other side here. But they are going as scheduled, uh, with a- as planned in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. But we'll that yeah. there. That's a whole other thing we'll get into on the other side of the time out here. Yeah, no, I'll I'll put this out here too. Uh, Super Crazy Wrestling is on Sunday afternoon at 12.45 at the Homestuck Boys Club. Crazy oh, very nice. Ivan, Crazy Ivan, Breaker Morant, Dan Maff, and Black G's. That should be some good stuff as well. And Hardcore Halloween with H2O is Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, with a 5 p.m. bell time at the at the H2O Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Oh, very nice. And I know you're up against a break. I'll save the Yeah, no, I, I appreciate I'll it. It's, it's been a hectic, crazy, uh, crazy, well, day and week here. Just uh, trying to get everything I'll, I'll you some, figured I'll out save here. You I'll save you a seat. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I was gonna say we'll see how we'll see how the schedule goes with things here. So yeah, uh, I was also trying to look up the uh, the start time here. So it'll be Friday, November second at nine a.m. Eastern. So it's a Friday morning. Uh, crown is the Crown Jewel pay per view. But we'll talk more about that on the other side. Uh, thank you so much for chiming in. We'll talk a little bit more next week. Yes, Happy Halloween this coming uh, this coming Wednesday here. How quickly the time flies by. So, yes, we'll uh, take care of some business, come back on the other side. Lucas will be joining on the lines here, and uh, we'll get into a lot more stuff, including Crown Jewel, Evolution, and a whole bunch more. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Maggiano's Little Italy has big changes to their carryout menu. Now you can take home twice the portion without doubling the price. It's a great way to get more of what you love at an amazing price. Get twice as much of your favorite dishes like spaghetti, meatballs, chicken parmesan, or their famous rigatoni D. Double the portion, not the price. That's right, double your same pasta portion for just $5 in carryout. Visit Maggiano's.com today. Repairing or replacing the water or sewer lines on your property can be costly. BCWSA offers a low-cost maintenance program to protect the pipes that run from your home or business to the mains in the street. For as little as $5 a month for residential customers and $10 for commercial, you're covered. Some property contributions and exclusions apply. Go to bcwsa.net for details or call 800-222-2068. Your partner for a safer environment. BCWSA Roofing. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. Oh, He's got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have to I start. didn't give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave Breaking cave I'm going to break <laughs> something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we ahead. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. And joining us on the lines here is none other than Lucas. Hello. Hello. Better late than never. Yeah. Which is what uh, Cheech Martin said about the Titanic and Ghostbusters, too. Oh, yeah. Gosh, it's been forever since I've seen that movie. Very good reference. So, yeah, we uh, we talked about Roman Reigns, and, uh, yeah, just to catch up here in case you uh, weren't tuned in. I was listening. I was oh, listening. you were listening. Okay. Yeah. My, my mother, uh, I was telling her, explaining to her, because she was saying, well, why is he talking about uh, 
homosexuality now. And I was ta- explaining her, like, the Billy and Chuck thing. And then I was explaining to her that sometimes people think that it, it's such a work that they would go so far as to fake something like that. And yeah, or in, in that case, it was the, the, the roles were reversed and that they made a storyline out of something that offended real people. And this in this yeah. case, they're doing something real and people are questioning as to whether or not it, you know, whether or not it's an angle. So it, it's it's but the then, other side of the coin. But, yeah, it, it was the best example I could think of on the spot. And the be- but the best thing about me explaining this was she said something around along the lines of they're being a so you're saying they're being like marks and I'm like oh. like I grab my heart and I'm just like I'm so proud it's working, <laughs> it's working. Uh, it only singing. took like a decade right yeah and then I started singing the chorus from Pink Floyd's The Wall and it just we all laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> Oh, it's good to see you've had a fun morning. Not really. No, not really? Oh, okay. Just when it involves wrestling. Uh, Fair enough, and let's get right on into that. So WWE confirmed in its quarterly financial report on Thursday that they will indeed follow through with the Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia this coming Friday. Yeah. Yeah, the financial report read in part, quote, WWE has operated in the Middle East for nearly 20 years and has developed a sizable and dedicated fan base. Considering the heinous crime committed at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, the company faced a very difficult decision as it relates to its event scheduled for November 2nd in Riyadh. Similar to other U.S.-based companies who plan to continue operations in Saudi Arabia, the company has decided to uphold its contractual obligations to the General Sports Authority and stage the event. Full year 2018 guidance is predicated on the staging of the Riyadh event as scheduled. Yeah. So, Um, translation? It's all about the money. It's all about the money. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. That's... I honestly can't say I'm surprised. They're saying it without saying it. But, I, I mean, I think in order to save some semblance of face, they're kind of towing that company line with it, even though it's very, very, very thinly veiled. Did you know that uh, John Cena uh, pulled himself from the event? He's, he's been pulled from the Crown Jewel event. Huh. Yeah, who is he supposed to face at the... Do, you, do we know? Do we have the... Uh, well, he was supposed to participate in the World Cup tournament. Hmm. So how that's going to work, I'm not too uh, not too sure. As... And they said Daniel Bryan. They, they, it was speculated that Daniel Bryan might also pull himself from the event. And if that's the case, then Andrade Cien Almas would uh, replace him in the match against AJ Styles. So a lot of moving parts here with this. Well, I mean, I can understand why Cena would. Other than like, I can understand why a few people. Um, would pull themselves from that event, considering what they represent and, like, also who they're associated with, especially with what's happening this Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, from from what I heard, it's been confirmed that Alexa Bliss is no longer going to be a part of the, cra- uh, the card for Evolution, which is unfortunate. Yeah, that, uh, that I did have that in my thing. Yeah, she was pulled from the lineup, and WWE announcing that Alicia Fox will take uh, uh, take Bliss's place and team with Mickey James against Trish Stratus and Lita. But Bliss will be in the corner of uh, Mickey James and Alicia Fox. Yeah, but it's just it's not the same, and it's heartbreaking because she even said like this is a, she wanted to have a match with Trish Stratus since she was a kid, and it's like it's just really heartbreaking to see. Yeah, and you know? how how often is an opportunity like this going to going to occur? I mean, we, do we know if evolution is going to be a, a, a yearly thing or? I, I think that's still up in the air. I, I think there are a lot of things that are still in play to make that uh, determination. Now, I can tell you that on the WWE website, they still have John Cena listed as participating in the World Cup tournament. Wouldn't surprise. Uh, well, oof. Well, I mean, it was. I'm pretty sure. I, I. I'm almost certain it was almost. I think pro. Uh, observer. I'm not sure at all. The wrestling observer. Yeah. Meltzer, that that whole, or yeah. somebody in that uh, that ilk. 
that that whole gang. Yes. Yeah, that whole gang. Yeah, no. So it looks like it's going to be. Uh, I mean, so as of right now, the World Cup tournament is set to have John Cena, Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, Dolph Ziggler, The Miz, and Rey Mysterio. Booyaka, booyaka. Yeah, that is your uh, that is, that is your eight in the tournament, and then also you've got the bar against the New Day for the uh, SmackDown tag titles. You've got. Big Show will be in the corner of the bar as well. Huh. Okay. They, yeah, they, yeah. Came back at SmackDown 1000 and cost the New Day the tag titles. I was not privy to, to this information until I watched the other night. I was catching up on missed episodes. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks to the alley oop of the world's largest athlete here. Uh, so also you'll have the uh, the big one that's been talked about: Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement. Uh, and getting a uh, very nice pension to do so. Mm. Uh, teaming up with Triple H against The Undertaker and Kane in a 2002 main event here in 2018. <laughs> uh, also, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. That is still set to go on. And now what was a triple threat match, thanks to Roman Reigns relinquishing the title, it is going to be Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman one-on-one for the vacant Universal Championship. That is... um. It's really up in the air because, like, obviously you would think go with Strowman, but I'm sure that Vince is a bit in panic mode right now for multiple reasons, and I'm sure he wants to put the title back on Brock. And that, and then I'm sure all the fans are like, no, no, do not. Don't you dare, Vince. Well, my guess is that perhaps you know, they'll be able to do a little bit more and the reaction will be a bit different because they're not – it's not a, I mean, it's a major pay-per-view in the sense of the grandeur of it, but it's not a WrestleMania. It's not Royal Rumble. It's not SummerSlam, where you have people coming in from all over the world for it. I mean, this is something that is, for lack of a better term, it's a Saudi showcase. Essentially, it is what a lot of these pay-per-view events, or a lot of these live event things are, where it's almost like a glorified house show. Mm-hmm. Usually you'd see a lot of champions retain, and uh, I'm sure if Reigns was in the was in the mix, he would have retained, and it would have been a great match regardless. Uh, but, but still, you know. Yeah, it's uh, I know it, it changes it changes up the game here to say the least. Um, what was the other thing I was going to ask? Oh, did you hear about a certain? I don't know if you have this in your news. And notes. Uh, do you know? Did you know about a certain uh, signee to NXT that will be making his NXT TV debut next week? Uh, I did not, but by all means, do tell. Do tell. Bro. Oh boy. Next week, the King of Bros, Matthew Riddle, will be making his NXT TV debut. Monty Factory sign. Uh, a former Monty Factory student. Uh, former Evolve champion, former Progress Atlas champion, uh, the King of Bros. Um, I'm really happy for him. I, I I can tell. Borderline going McDuck on me here. No, no. <laughs> like I said before, when I first started training at the Monster Factory, he was one of the first approachable guys when I started training there. Uh, really and from what I've seen, one of the last, at least in Europe. No, I'm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> of course it was. But uh, it, also in the uh, news here, do you know who else uh, may be making an appearance at the Crown Jewel event? No, I, I'm not sure. Who? Bro, Ther. Hogan? Yes, Hulk Hogan teased that he may appear at the Crown Jewel event as well as at WrestleMania during an interview with Jay Reddick of the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, he had said in the article, There are a lot of plans in the works. I'm looking forward to going to Saudi Arabia with the WWE, looking forward to WrestleMania. But yeah, we're moving forward at a rapid pace. It's exciting to have this opportunity again after all these years when I was there and gone. End quote. Yeah, he was interviewed yeah. for a... Um, uh, what is it? They're uh, actually going on today they're at uh, somewhere in Orlando. There's a an NWO reunion where Hogan Hall and Nash are all there for an appearance. Mm. Yeah. 
Orlando gets all that and the sunny weather as well. And we've got cold rain. Good for them. Cold November rain in October. Yeah. But uh, also interesting, and I'm sure you'll have a little chuckle at this here, but uh, he also talked about how he'd write his final chapter in the wrestling business. Uh, here's what he had to say about that. He said, quote, this is a total ego trip, but this is what I would love. Oh, oh, from Hogan? Oh, I, I'm so surprised. Total <laughs> ego trip. Well, I, didn't, I didn't even get that far, and you're already all over it. Uh, he, this, he said, but this is what I would love. To be the hood ornament of the WWE, to be the Babe Ruth of the WWE, and to always be around when any of the big stuff is going on. I sure would love to be a part of the WrestleManias and the big events and the grand openings and the new conquests of the WWE. Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong, China, Antarctica, the North Pole. Whatever it is, I'd like to be a part of the ongoing growth of the wrestling business and be with WWE the whole time. That's the only place to be. I want to be on top again, brother. Hulkamania. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, make a seniors championship, brother. Yeah. When's the geriatric brand free going to happen, brother? I want to bring in the WWE oh. AARP title. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gonna get in so much trouble for that. No, uh, <laughs> I fall in and I can't get up in the oh, yeah, oh, see now, hard. now you just went too far. Oh come on! No, I didn't. <laughs> the, winner uh, only, the winner not only wins a title, he gets out his his knee replacement and hip surgery covered, brother. <laughs> oh, all right, you, you you hit the point of the joke going a little too far. You, 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 you were trying to go Family Guy where it was going so long that it would be funny again, but uh, no. Didn't quite work and, out that way. And this is when we're, so, we're talking about Hogan, and I'm the one going too far? Hurrah. Yep. Wow, oh, all right. So, I'm, I'm, in case you didn't hear about this, a uh, quick thing of note, the, uh, uh, from our friends over at George's Cards and Collectibles, the place to get action figures, replica title belts, sports memorabilia, banners, and more, well, they've got another autograph signing coming up on Sunday, November 11th, from noon until 2, and at the, at the George's Neshaminy Mall location, how's this for a, uh, for, uh, for a pack of five here? Former WWE star Ken Patera. Nice. Former WWE... I didn't hear about by the way, I what? did. I did, in fact, hear about this. Oh, you did? Okay. Former WWE and WCW wrestler as well as actor Zeus. <laughs> exactly. No, it, it's, hey, main event at a couple of papers. Oh, all right. Uh, as well as WWE Hall of Famers Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Awesome. Sonny. Uh, yeah. Take it easy. And Mean oh, Gene no, Okerlund. Stop it. No, that was an F, as in... Uh, uh, now, I, I know what it was in. I, that's why I was telling you to take it easy. And Mean Gene Okerlund. Yes. Yes. Oh, give me a break. Yes, uh, definitely, a, uh, definitely a day that you won't want to pull a uh, SummerSlam 89 from Mean Gene. That's for sure. Yeah. I was going to say, you, you, you know the one. Uh, oh, I know. I'm not going to say it. Uh, <laughs> it's probably for the better, and I was looking for it and couldn't find it quick enough, so thought, we're just going to move was, on. I just thought that it was, his shirt was on top. He said, tuck it, you know, like, neaten up. Yeah, yeah, tuck the shirt in, exactly. No, that uh, certainly certainly wasn't the case. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong when it's live, right, Vince McMahon? <laughs> Anyway, George's has two locations oh, wow. for all of your cards and collectibles needs, including their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, as well as in the Neshaminy Mall in the movie theater wing. For more information, go to georgescollectibles.com and follow George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. So uh, I, think, I think we're at about that point where we should take a little bit of a break here as we're only on for another 11 minutes or so. And then when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll tell you about our other friends here and... Uh, then getting to things is we've got Widener football coming up at uh, 1245. So you want to stick with us through the uh, the break here? Of course. Well, I don't know. You're a busy man. You've got things to do and stuff and places to be. And 
We're going to take care of a break now. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Hi, Merle Reese, inviting you to tune in every Friday morning at 8 to hear Head Games, a new must-listen-to show for athletes and coaches of all levels and ages. Mindful Athlete Training in Newtown is a mental circuit training program that prepares the athlete to perform at the highest levels of today's game. Athletes get in the zone faster and stay there longer. Tune in every Friday at 8 a.m. right here on WBCB 1490 and throughout the world at WBCB1490.com. On December 9th of 1981, my husband, Philadelphia Police Officer Daniel Faulkner, was brutally murdered by Mumia Bull Jamal. Jamal shot Danny in the back and then point blank between the eyes and left him for dead. Jamal silenced Danny forever. But Scott Wallace funded an organization that's given my husband's killer a public voice for over 20 years. I'm pleading with you, please don't give Scott Wallace a voice in Congress. Defending Main Street is responsible for the content of this advertising. Paid for by Defending Main Street, DefendingMainStreet.com. You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, October 27th. On this date in 1990, the NWA held its Halloween Havoc pay-per-view. In the main event, Sting pinned Sid Vicious to retain the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. On this day in 1991, WCW held its Halloween Havoc pay-per-view. In the main event, Lex Luger defeated Ron Simmons in a best two out of three falls match to retain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. On this day in 1996, WCW held its Halloween Havoc pay-per-view. In the main event, Hollywood Hulk Hogan pinned Randy Savage to retain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. On this day in 2013, WWE held its Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. In the main event, Randy Orton defeated Daniel Bryan in a Hell in a Cell match with Shawn Michaels as a guest referee to win the vacant WWE Championship. This has been Today in Wrestling History, October 27th. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry and Lucas Twitch DeSangro here with you. Lucas is live via satellite. As always. Yeah, doing it live by satellite. Way to be the rock. Yeah, I bring it. Or, or the pebble. Uh, more like the skipping, skipping stone. True. Although the skipping stones come to a stop at some point. Which which I do to this show all the time. <laughs> that is not inaccurate. Uh, and something else that seems to be coming to a stop, unfortunately, is uh, viewers over on Impact as the new time slot doing a little bit more damage. Well, I don't know what the expected damage was on it, but this past Thursday, the debut with the new time slot of 10, 10 p.m. Eastern, it drew 98,000 total viewers on Pop TV, according to ShowBuzzDaily.com. Down from the 189,000 viewers the, the show had accumulated the previous week. That's almost half. Ah. Now, uh, for what it's worth, uh, Impact started around the time that the Thursday NFL game went to halftime. What impact that has, I don't know. No pun intended. But, right. But for further comparison, the October 26th Impact show from last year produced 231,000 viewers. So it's uh, a little bit of a challenge, we'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, in that financial report we were talking about from WWE, they reported $33.6 million in net income compared to $21.8 million in the uh, net income of the third quarter of last year. So making almost $12 million more in that three-month time frame than a year ago. It's all about the money. Riveting. Yeah, and callers uh, during that report had asked for more details about the thought process of going forward with Crown Jewel as scheduled. You'd think they would at least kind of just circle back to the statement that they gave, but uh, they didn't even go that far. They just said that they wouldn't talk a lot about it, that it's a sensitive subject, and that they had said all they wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah, why would you? <laughs> well, it's like... Okay. Stop. We're, we're not trying to get any more heat than we already had. Can you not? Can you Pretty not? much. Well, got to let you know this here because we only have like four minutes left. Tonight is a night to get spooky and kinky at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA, where tonight at 8, you can play the dirtiest quiz game in Pennsylvania, Kinky Quizzo. Join Dawn for four <laughs> rounds of fun and games, but do not cheat. Consider yourself warned. Plus, get it before it's gone. On tap is All Goblets Have Spirits, the Scotch Ale brewed with maple syrup and apples. And you'll appreciate this, Lucas. Tickets go on sale this Monday for Thanks for the Laughs 4, the fourth annual night of comedy starring nationally recognized comedians Don Jameson and Jim Florentine. Yes, from that metal show. Yeah, the, uh, the best Thanksgiving Eve tradition since Survivor Series in the early 90s. It's Thanks for the Laughs 4, and it's Wednesday, November 21st. And there are a lot of weekly features as well, which we'll get into more next week. But it's just a few reasons why it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Please enjoy responsibly. So with that, since we are down to now, uh, we've got our three-minute warning here. Where's Rosie and Jamal? It's time for... Birthday. There we go. Three plus two Brucey bonuses. On this date in 1963, Lucas, one Marla Ann Maples was born. The ex-wife of now President Donald Trump and celebrity guest timekeeper at WrestleMania 7, she turns 54 today. Wow. Yeah. She's now one of three ex-wives of eventual presidents, and two of them are from our current one, for whatever that's worth. The other was Jane Wyman, who was married to Ronald Reagan before. Well, never mind. On this date in 1965, Bruno Lauer was born. The manager, referee, and former WWF women's champion known as Harvina, but better known as Harvey Whippleman, turns 53 today. Harvina. Yes, oh. yeah. The, Harvey Whippleman was the WWF women's champion. It was yeah. acceptable in the 90s. It was acceptable at the time. It, it's acceptable now. Uh, well, yeah, true. We had Santina not too long ago, so I guess yes, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah. Cue Eric Bischoff in the in the bicycle. <laughs> there you go. Bicycle. Uh, oh, I stink. <laughs> I, I knew where you were going with that. I'm going full Norton today, Peron. I, I, I noticed this. On this date in 1979, Robert Anthony Fish was born. The current WWE and NXT wrestler, former NXT tag team champion, three-time Ring of Honor tag team champion, yeah. as well as a world television champion in Ring of Honor and a two-time IWGP junior heavyweight tag team champion, better known as Bobby Fish, turns 39 yeah. today. I figured you got it from Robert Anthony, but you know, just no, no, no. I, as soon as I heard Robert something fish, you you put it together. Now the two Brucey bonuses, uh, things outside of the world of wrestling. On this date, in 1984, Kelly Osborne was born. The television personality and daughter of Black Sabbath singer and occasional WWE guest Ozzy Osborne turns 34 today. Everyone, everyone loves Ozzy. You are going full Norton. And on this date in 1997, Lonzo Anderson Ball was born, the current Los Angeles Lakers basketball player who was drafted number two overall last season and controversially released a $495 pair of basketball shoes under his father's big baller brand of merchandising, turns 21 today. Wow. Yeah. Where does the time go? Well, it's just about up for us here, so stay tuned. We've got Widener football coming your way. Lucas, thanks for joining. I'll see you at the MFPW later tonight. 
And thank you for tuning in here to 1490 WBCB. Stay tuned as we have Widener versus Alvernia coming up next here on 